Thank you for attending the Kentucky Public Pensions Authority Tier 1 Strategies for Retirement webinar. My name is James Isaacs, and I'm a retirement benefit consultant within the Division of Member Services. During today's webinar, we'll discuss the formula to calculate Tier 1 retirement benefits to gain a better understanding of how these strategies will work within the formula, and then we'll go into the different approaches you can take to maximize your retirement benefits such as purchasing service credit, using your current sick leave or compensatory pay at termination, and how you can time your retirement to potentially increase your final compensation. The formula to calculate Tier 1 benefits is your final compensation multiplied by a percentage or benefit factor multiplied by your years of service. Members that wish to retire early will multiply that formula by a percentage which reduces the monthly benefit. To determine your retirement benefits, whether you're retiring early or under normal or unreduced retirement, we encourage you to log into Member Self Service and use the Benefit Estimate Calculator. For the presentation today, it's important to define the variables within the formula to understand how these strategies will impact your benefits. So let's start with final compensation. Final compensation for Tier 1 non hazardous members is the highest five fiscal years of service, and for hazardous members, it's the highest three fiscal years. To determine the highest salaries, we use the fiscal years with the highest monthly average. Partial years can be used in determining the member's final compensation. Only 48 months are required in the calculation for non-hazardous members, and a minimum of 24 months are required in the calculation for hazardous. Notice fiscal year one for both the non-hazardous and hazardous examples. Both only have one month of service and the wages represented in the calculation. We'll come back to why that's important in just a moment. In the non-hazardous example, years two through five represent 48 months or the required minimum. When we add the additional month from fiscal year one, we've now exceeded the 48 month minimum requirement. This, the same goes for the hazardous example. Years two and three represent 24 months. When we add the one month from fiscal year one, we've exceeded the 24 month minimum requirement. For tier one members, a payout of compensatory time at retirement is considered creditable compensation and increases the member's final compensation. Creditable compensation is defined as earnings that must be reported to KPPA and be used to calculate retirement benefits. Now that we know our final compensation meets the requirements as defined, we can determine the member's final compensation by adding the total funds earned over their highest five or highest three fiscal years. We then divide that amount by the months of service that are represented within those years. I mentioned we would discuss the options to use partial years in the calculation. Notice again in year one for both the non-hazardous and hazardous examples that there is just one month represented. Just looking at this example, I would assume these members are retiring August 1st. The reason I make this assumption is because KPPA's fiscal year is July 1st through June 30th. If a member works July 1st through July 31st, that is one month into the new fiscal year. Therefore, there is one wages represented in the calculation. By the member working one month into the next fiscal year, it allows a lower fiscal year of wages to be dropped from the calculation therefore increasing the member's final compensation. Let's go through each calculation to further explain. We'll start with the non-hazardous example. When we add the money represented over the five fiscal years, the sum of those earnings is $186,297. Over those five years, there are 49 months represented. So to get a monthly average of earnings over those five years, we will divide $186,000 dollars by 49 months of service. We will then multiply that monthly average by 12. The salary average of the highest five years, or final compensation for this example, is $45,623.76. Now, do the same thing for the hazardous example. When we add the money represented over the three fiscal years, the sum of those earnings is $106,000. $995. Over those three years, there are 25 months represented. 
to get a monthly average of earnings over those three years, we will divide $106,995 by 25 months of service. To get a yearly average or the final compensation, we'll multiply that monthly average by 12. As a result, the final compensation for the hazardous example is $51,357.60. This will come up again when we discuss August 1st and timing of retirement later in the presentation. So now that we understand how to calculate our final compensation, let's move on to the next variable of the formula, which is the benefit factor. Benefit factors are established by statute and are based upon an initial participation date, the type of service, and the system in which the member participates. For those Tier 1 members participating in KERS non-hazardous, your benefit factor will be either 1.97% or 2%. Members who have consecutive service from January of 1998 through January of 1999 use the 2% benefit factor. For members that do not have that 13-month period, we use the 1.97%. KERS hazardous members use 2.49%. For Tier 1 members participating in CERS non-hazardous, your benefit factor will be either 2% or 2.2%. Members that have an initial participation date in any system prior to August of 2004 use the higher 2.2% benefit factor. All members participating on or after August 1st of 2004, but before September 1st of 2008, use a 2% benefit factor. CERS hazardous and state police retirement both use 2.5%. For those members that have mixed service, each period of service will need to be calculated separately, but they're added together for your total retirement benefit. To calculate mixed service, use the benefit estimate calculator on member self-service. The final piece of the formula to retire with full retirement benefits is your years of service. Let's look at an example to calculate your basic annual benefit. In this example, the member is Tier 1, participating in CERS non-hazardous. We calculated the member's final compensation earlier in the presentation as $45,623.76. It clearly states the member is retiring with 27 years, and based on the chart from the previous slide, we will use 2.2% as the benefit factor. We won't discuss retirement eligibility in the webinar today, but to retire with an unreduced benefit for Tier 1 members, you must have 27 years of service or retire at a minimum age of 65. This member has 27 years of service, and because of his service, no percentage will be applied to the formula to reduce the retirement benefit. So let's now plug the numbers into our formula. $45,623.76 multiplied by the 2.2% benefit factor multiplied by 27 years of service. The result is a basic annual benefit of $27,100.51. In this example, the member is Tier 1, hazardous, participating in KERS. We calculated the member's final compensation earlier as $51,357.60. The member is retiring with 20 years, and based on being KERS hazardous, she used the 2.49% benefit factor. To retire with an unreduced benefit for Tier 1 hazardous, members must retire with 20 years of service, or retire at a minimum age of 55. So this member has 20 years of service, and because of her service, no percentage will be applied to the formula to reduce the retirement benefit. So let's plug these numbers into our formula. $51,357.60 multiplied by the 2.49% benefit factor multiplied by 20 years of service is a basic annual benefit of $22,000 $469.76. Now that we understand how retirement is calculated, let's look again at what variables we will cover today in the presentation that could potentially impact our retirement benefits. These include purchasing service credit, using accrued sick leave and compensatory leave, 
and the timing of your retirement. As we now know, the formula to calculate retirement benefits is final compensation multiplied by the benefit factor multiplied by years of service. For those members that are eligible to purchase service credit, buying time will increase your years of service in the system. Let's look at the example on this slide. If the member retires with 27 years of service, the basic annual benefit is $27,100.51. If the member purchases five years of service, the member increases their years of service from 27 to 32. Now the calculation is $45,623.76 multiplied by 2.2% multiplied by 32 years of service. The member's basic annual benefit increases by $5,018.62, or $418.22 per month. It's important to note that there are some basic requirements in order to purchase credit, and in most cases you'll be required to provide verification of eligibility to purchase the service. For a full list of service purchase types and the information required to verify the period of service, go to kyret.ky.gov and click on Member, Tier 1, then purchasing credit and service types. If you have determined you're eligible to purchase the service credit and would like to see an estimate of the service purchase cost, then log in to member self-service by going to myretirement.ky.gov. Comparing the cost of purchasing service to an estimate with and without the purchase can help members determine the return on their investment. Now let's look at how accrued sick leave can impact your retirement benefits. Many members are eligible to receive service credit for unused accumulated sick leave upon retirement. And like purchasing service credit, the additional service provided for unused sick leave will be used to determine your retirement benefits by increasing the total years of service. These are the sick leave charts used to calculate a member's service credit. For example, if a member works eight hours per day and retires with 928 hours of sick leave, the member's total service in the calculation will be increased by six months. Keep in mind when you're planning for retirement, the KPPA only uses the minimum hours required in the chart to credit a member's account. If a member is working eight hours per day and was to retire with 1,095 hours of sick leave, the member would only be credited with six months of service. They would need 1,096 hours to credit their account with seven months of sick leave. In this example, KPPA could not apply the hours in excess of the 928 to the member service credit at retirement. Additionally, different employers, especially in CERS, have different sick leave policies, which may impact how much is reported to KPPA. Let's look at a couple of examples to better explain sick leave's impact upon retirement benefits. In this first example, we're going to use the six months of sick leave to increase our total years of service. You can see that when we compare the members 27 years without using sick leave versus adding the six months of sick leave to the 27 years of earned service, it increases the member's benefit by $41.82 per month or $501.87 per year. As mentioned before, Full retirement benefits is 27 years of service or age 65 for Tier 1 non-hazardous members. Members also have the option to retire early with reduced benefits at 25 years of service regardless of age or at age 55 with 5 years of service. In this example, the member is eligible to retire with 26 and a half years of service but will receive a penalty on their retirement. Notice the SEF or a special early factor in the table. If the member retires with 26 and a half years of service, he or she would receive 96.75% of their total benefits. If the member uses the six months of sick leave, they reduce that penalty to zero. The member's 26 and a half years of service added to the six months of sick leave gives the member a total of 27 years, which equates to full retirement benefits. By applying the sick leave, the member increases the monthly benefit by $113.86 per month, or $1,366.31 annually. Now, let's look at compensatory leave. 
Using compensatory leave, often referred to as comp time at retirement, can increase final compensation. Many members participating in the Kentucky Employees Retirement System and State Police Retirement System accrue comp time for hours worked in excess of their regular work schedule. In retirement, these members are paid for their unused comp time based on their ending rate of pay. For Tier 1 members, the payout is considered creditable compensation and is added into the last month's salary reported to KPPA. As with the previous example used to calculate the member's final compensation, we will assume the member is retiring August 1st. One month is represented in fiscal year 1, which implies that the member worked July 1st through July 31st with $4,158 in wages represented in that one month. The final compensation to the left of the screen does not assume a payout for compensatory leave, while the final compensation to the right of the screen assumes a payout of 239 hours, which translates into $6,134.41 in a lump sum payout. Remember, comp time is added to the last month's salary, so when we add $6,134.41 in comp time to the $4,158 in regular wages earned, the one month represented in fiscal year one increases to $10,292.41. Now, if we were to annualize that amount, it would appear this member was on target to earn over $123,000 for fiscal year one. Now, we know that's not the case, but by dropping out a lower year and replacing it with a one month into the new fiscal year, it helps to increase the member's final compensation. The final compensation is now $47,126.06 versus $45,623.76 without the comp time. The member's monthly benefit increased by $67.60 or $811.20 annually. I think it's important to mention that the members expecting a payout of their comp time at retirement often try to time their retirement so that it happens earlier in the fiscal year. The later in the fiscal year a member works and retires with compensatory leave, the more their payout of that time is diluted. Remember, by the member retiring August 1st, the $10,292.41 represented the month of July alone. Had the member retired September, in our example, $4,158 in wages for both July and August would be included, plus the $6,134.41 in comp time. The total amount would still be their fiscal year earnings, but now it represents two months rather than one. This leads us right into our discussion on how to time your retirement. For reasons like we just discussed, such as comp time payouts, it could be beneficial for a member to time their retirement early in a fiscal year. Comp time payouts, triple pays, overtime worked. All these things can help increase your final compensation, which is based on your years with the highest average salaries. It's important to keep in mind that while some increases in earnings are excluded from pension spiking, such as comp time payouts at termination only, others will be subject to those pension spiking rules. For more information on pension spiking, go to kyret.ky.gov. For today, today's example, we're going to compare a June 1st retirement date, which is 11 months into a fiscal year, versus an August 1st retirement date. Since we look at the years that have the highest monthly average salaries, it's important to pay special attention to partial years. In the June 1st calculation, fiscal year 1 represents $44,388.67 over 11 months. To determine fiscal year 1's monthly average, we need to divide $44,388.67 by 11. The monthly average for fiscal year 1 is $4,035.33. If we annualize that, it becomes $48,424 for the year. This means that fiscal year one will be our highest year at $48,424, with fiscal year five being the lowest year at $40,333. By working two additional months, we were able to drop our lowest year of $40,333 and replace it with $4,158, representing the one month into that new fiscal year. If I annualize $4,158, it translates to $48,896 for the year. So is it more beneficial for me to retire June or August? 
Well, not only will I drop out my lowest year by retiring August 1st, but I will also accrue two additional months of service. In this example, the member increased their monthly benefit by $73.14, or $877.69 per year, by working two extra months and retiring August 1st. Ultimately, it's your decision to determine when you should retire based on your individual situation. To compare retirement dates and help make a decision that works best for you, go to myretirement.ky.gov and log into your self-service account. You can run various retirement dates and change variables such as adding purchase credit, accrued sick leave, or compensatory leave, and this will better reflect your situation at retirement. When you are ready to retire, go to the Ready to Retire page on our website at kyret.ky.gov. There, you'll find step-by-step -step instructions through the retirement process and how to apply for retirement online. Also, go to our webinars and videos page. There, you'll find many videos and webinars that can help guide you in your decision-making process. Our legal notice concludes the Tier 1 Strategies for Retirement webinar. This presentation, of course, is intended for general information reference only. If you do have specific questions regarding your account, please contact us at 1-800-928-4646. On behalf of myself and the other KPPA staff, we thank you for attending today's webinar. Have a great day.